So I'm providing you with all the data that you need to do a very basic event study in Excel. Um, we have three columns in this data. Um, one is a, com a company identifier. Uh, so this one is 11406, and then a different company, their identifier is 11917. There's six companies in total. I've also provided you with returns and those are daily returns and the date that those returns actually happened. This is on the event study data sheet in Excel. There's also another sheet for the actual event dates. This is the company identifier and that's the date that the event happened. We're going to be looking at uh, merger dates or the dates that a, a company was or it was announced that a company was being taken over. So the first thing we have to do is put things in event time, but this is complicated by the fact that stocks don't trade every single day. To put things in event time, we're going to need to do some intermediate steps. The first step is to create what I'm going to call fake time. All fake time is, is uh, just a, a time series, a, a one through something or other um, for however many days are in this data. So I started with one, I then back referenced the cell above it, and then added one to that. The reason I'm doing this is because now I can drag this all the way down to the end. Now what I'm going to do here, these are all formulas. I want to make them hard-coded values. So I'm going to copy this entire column, right-click, paste special, and then there should be an option for paste values. Now these numbers are no longer formulas, they're actually hard-coded values. The next thing we need to do is create the event time. To do this, we need to find the event date. So for this first stock, 11406, the announcement that the firm was being taken over happened on November 1st, 2010. So let's find November 1st, 2010. There it is. So in fake time, the event happened on day 91. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put 91 right here. Then I'm going to copy it, and then we can see that this is the last observation for firm 11406. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go all the way to the top, holding shift, click up there, and then hit uh, paste. So now we have a column of fake time event dates. Now we can get event time. To get event time, all we have to do is take fake time minus fake time event date, and we get event time. So what I'm going to do here is highlight everything. And then if uh, you hit control D, it's going to copy that formula uh, over all highlighted cells. It's a little bit different in Mac, um, but you can do the same thing by dragging the highlighted cell, such as, such like this. Once again, I'm going to hard code these values. Be careful when you're doing this to not drag this past the end of that particular company. So I stopped at the last observation for company 11406 and did not copy anything for one firm 11917. Now that we have event time, we can proceed with the event study. I'm asking uh, you to come up with a measure of the abnormal returns of the firm. The 
abnormal to calculate the abnormal return, you need a measure of the expected return. For simplicity, we're going to use the average return over the 90 days prior to the announcement. So to do this, we need to get the average return. So I'm going to put equals and use the average function. Go over here to return. And then I'm going to drag this all the way down. Oops. to day negative one, uh, or day negative one in event time. And this is, we'll calculate the average return for day negative 90 through negative one. Importantly, we need to lock down these cells. So when we drag it later, it doesn't um, drag the cell references also. To do that, we put dollar signs in front of both the column letter and the row number for both numbers. So now when we drag it, it remains C2 through C91. Let's look what happens if we didn't do that. So I'm going to delete these. If we just highlighted and didn't lock down those cells, What happened is, instead of referencing C2 through C92, everything shifted down one and is now referencing C3 through C92. And then you go down one more cell at C4 through C93. So all the references were being dragged down also. We don't want that. So let's lock down those cells on a personal computer. Um, using Windows, you can hit F4, and that will shortcut it. So let's drag this all the way down. And notice that I'm dragging it all the way down to the end of event time, in this case, day plus five. Now let's label that um, expected return. The next step is going to be to calculate the abnormal return. So, To calculate the abnormal return, you just take the regular return minus the expected return, and there's your abnormal return. So on day negative 90, which corresponds to 6-24-2010, the abnormal return was negative 1.03%. Once again, we're going to drag this all the way down. I'm using shortcuts, um, but you just as easily could have clicked this and dragged it all the way down. Same operation. Now we need to calculate the cumulative abnormal return, or CAR, for this event study. I'm asking you to calculate two different cars. So this one is the five day car. Oops. To calculate the five day car, we're going to start at day equals zero, which is the announcement date or the event date. And we're going to calculate the cumulative abnormal return um, up to that period in time. So using the sum function, and I'm referencing the abnormal return up to uh, this point. Then I'm putting a colon, and that means that uh, it's going to reference cells I92, and in this case through I92. This is what we want. So I'm going to end the function. One important thing, though, we need to do is we need to lock this first cell. The reason we need to lock this first cell is because when we drag it down, we want each summation to be the summation from the event date to the current day and event time. So for uh, T plus two, it's I90, 
I92, the event date, through t equals 3. Sim for t equals 5, it's a summation through day number 5. So you can see by setting up the uh, function and locking down that first cell, we can just drag everything down really easily. So the five-day car on this company, or for this announcement, was 21.6. The, the other portion of the, the assignment is asking for a car that starts at negative 10 and goes through 5. We do a very similar operation, but now instead of starting at negative 10, or starting at zero, we start at negative 10. So equals sum. I'm going to reference this abnormal return here. Hit colon. And I guess in this case, I need to click it again. Close off the brackets. But now I'm going to go back and lock down this cell, this first cell. Now I can drag it down and come up with the car for a window of negative 10 to day 5. And I'm going to call this one the um, 15 day car. So the final part, or a final part of the assignment is to find these, the average of these uh, cumulative abnormal returns. The way I think would be easiest to do this is to create a new sheet and come up with event time, or create a column called event time, which has starts with day negative 10, and then we create uh, event time by going the previous cell, plus one. And this is back referencing the previous day and adding one. Now we take this and drag it down Oop, to a little bit too many. Now I would create a column for every stock. So for stock uh, identifier 11406, now I would copy the cumulative abnormal return for negative 10 through 5. Now, it's important to paste special here. And the reason that's important is because these are formulas, and if you didn't, it would reference weird cells and not give you what you want. So using paste special um, actually just copies the numbers. So now I'm going to turn that back to a percent. So I would do this for all the uh, um, other stocks that we have. There's six total, so there'd be six columns here. The final thing I would do is I would create an average column and then use the average function and average across everything. Now I can create or drag everything down and create the average. Remember that there will be other uh, stocks here with their cumulative abnormal returns. So this will give us the average return for, um, or the average cumulative abnormal return for all six stocks. And then we can plot this. We plot. Uh, event time on the x-axis and the average cumulative abnormal return on the y-axis. And this will give us the characteristic plot of a large jump at uh, the announcement of a merger. And that's really all you have to do.